Ah, man. So let me talk about Tia Marie. So Tia Marie has a show on WeTV called My Next Act. Honestly, she should name that show My Next Husband. So, you know, if you are now, for those who don't know, um, Tia Marie was married to Corey Hedrick, right? They were married for a long time. They got two kids together. She filed for divorce from Corey back in October 2022. It has been about a couple of years now. Um, she even said that um, she said that uh, Corey was her first everything. So seems like Corey was the one who popped that cherry. Oh. Yeah, clapped them oh. cheeks for the first time. All that low mileage, everything was brand new. So Corey was the one who put mileage on that car or on her. I'm not comparing her to a car, but yeah, I get what I'm trying to say. Um, so she filed for divorce, and uh, she been out there ever since she filed for divorce. She tried going on a few dates, and uh, you know she been doing her thing. But it seems like things hasn't been working, right? And uh, even though she been posting a lot, pretending like not pretending like you know, I was I would say like showing people that she's happy but deep inside she's not happy she hasn't been happy uh, i'm saying that for a reason man because on the show on the new show that she has with um she has on we tv she's kind of spoke about it right about the divorce all that but before that let me play a clip of from um, Corey hardrick that was on uh, when he went um it was on one of them festivals in miami uh that was like a few months ago so this is what Kari said, right? You know, it's it's tough when it feels like you're going through something alone and no one understands and, you know, uh, no one's there for you. And it's just like, you know, you're a man, especially a black man. You know, he's, you know, he's tough. He's strong. But you know, but you know, it was a couple, a year and a half crying myself to sleep every night. You know, nobody see that. Yeah. Nobody see that. Yeah. You know, like, you know, you, you, you live five minutes away from your babies, you know what I'm saying? Because people who know Corey Hardrick know that his kids and his family was everything to him. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm stronger than I thought I was. Yes. I'm really stronger. And that, by the grace, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, it's like... All right, man. So to me, it seems like they both miss each other. They still love each other. They might not be in love like that, but they do love each other. They've been together for a long time. That's all they knew. That's all they knew. Them too. So they've been together for a long time. They got divorced. They miss each other. They're going through it. It's been two years. But to me, it seems like they just got divorced like last month. Ever since they got divorced, like um, uh, Tia, Tia Marie, all she talks about, all she posts about is about her getting a divorce uh, from Kari. So to me, I'm like, yo, why don't you just pick up the phone, call your boo? I know it's not that easy, but let me just say it that way, right? Why don't you just pick up your phone, be like, babe, hey, I'm sorry. Can we get back together? Put your ego on the side. Y'all got kids together. You know what I'm saying? Don't 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 worry about all the people, what they're saying. They, they don't, yo, these people, they don't live with you. They're going, they don't, they, they don't go through the pain with you though you the one going through the pain alone but let me go ahead and play um play a tia marie uh actually let me play another Corey's video right um explain the issue before i play the tia marie clips right so this is another Corey's video right right and do your job you know i i feel like you'll never get through that you know what i'm saying like a lot of praying a lot of knowing that god is real god is actually truly real in my life a lot of stillness man when you sit still a lot you know you can hear a lot of things from me. A lot of isolation, solitude, and um, just knowing, you know, if I can just put one foot in front of the other, you know, and take it a day at a time. Because I'm, I'm taking it a day at a time, still to this day. Really? Oh. Yeah, I just take it a day at a time. You know, black men have feelings. You know, black men hurt. Black men are in, like, pain, and sometimes we don't have outlets to you know, like talking to you now, no one really asked me these questions, never really. So it's like sometimes we feel like we're dealing with it alone, not unless you have like a therapist or, a, you know, a close confidant or like friend. But um, it's, it's not easy because it feels like as a black man, you can't show vulnerability to the world, you know, because it's a form of weakness. But it should be looked at as a form of strength, you know, like men do need to cry. You know, because when it's all bottled up, 
you know, and, and inside, you know, that's when stress, things can happen, different tensions. You gotta be able 100%. to have a, a outlet to release. Like I said, that's the only way that you can get to the true healing of everything. So, um, yeah, when I was speaking in Miami, that's just how I was felt, how I felt at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, so to this day, I just, I look at my kids and say, daddy got you forever. You know, I look at my daughter, you know, when they smile at me and they know daddy really loves them. My son knows daddy really loves me. That's what brings me joy right now. And that's what keeps me saying, I'm, I'm on my way. I want to be the biggest in the world, you know, from a, humble place, but I feel like from a skill set, I feel like I am that dude. Like that's just how I really feel. And I feel like I can step into that more because of my children. Yo, man, I, I feel him though, for real. So Kari wasn't too vocal about the divorce after that happened. He just started speaking about it a few months ago, right? Although he wasn't now too vocal about it, but it seems like, oh, I believe he like went through a lot during the divorce. He went through a lot. He felt it. He really felt it. Maybe the pain was deeper than to Marie. I mean, I cannot compare it like that, but sometimes because the reason why I'm saying that because he was the one holding it in. He didn't want to speak about it. And sometimes when you have a pain, something bothers you, you don't speak about it. You have nobody to talk about it, to talk to. You keep it in, in all the time. It doesn't help you. It hurts you the most. But on the other hand, Tia Murray was more vocal about it. I believe she was speaking to friends. Uh, I don't know, maybe family members, loved ones in general, say. So that helps a little bit. You know, when you have people to talk to about, you know, what's going on in your life, you know, things that bothers you, things that bother you in your life, things of the nature, it helps a lot, though. Compared to someone who has nobody, you keep holding things in, it makes things worse. So based on the situation, it seems like he went through it like it was more impacted than Tia Marie. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. But it seems like it. And why he said it's right. I mean, yeah, you're supposed to cry. It's not, it is not like a black man thing. I think it's a man thing, right? Because you have to be masculine. You have to keep masculine framing 100% all the time. Yeah, sometimes you got to cry. I'm sorry, brother. You got to cry. But you have to know when to cry. You have to know the time. When to cry. You cannot cry all the time. Shout out to Tyrese. Tyrese has been crying a lot. I get it, brother. You're going through it, but you've been crying a lot. Don't be crying all the time anyway. You have to know when and where. Therese, you just cry way too much. Please, brother. We love you. We need you, but you cry too much. All right? So crying is perfectly fine. You know, we all go through issues, right? Sometimes crying helps a lot, right? You're supposed to cry sometimes, but you just have to know when and where. So let me go ahead and play um, some clips from um, Tia Marie, right? So these are clips from the new uh, TV show, uh, My Next Act. I'll just say My Next Husband. Uh, let me play. This is the first one that I have. Before I play the next clip, let me say this, man. If you are a woman, you marry, please stay away from single women. Those single women should not be your close friends. Yeah, I can be friends, but yeah, I cannot be too close. Because them single women like to keep married women singles seriously that's how i've been noticing because they feel like yo i'm single like it's like a subconscious thing right although they might think they're not doing it but subconsciously they're doing it they're like without even thinking like oh yeah i want my friend to be single too so we both single we can we can relate we can talk about the same thing i don't want my friend to come here telling me about oh my god guess what my husband just bought me flowers last week oh we're going on a vacation with the kids Oh my God, he made dinner for me. They must say, oh girl, mm -hmm, he's so sweet. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Deep inside, the Loki jealous. That's what it is with women. It's natural. So you got to stay away from those single women. They're not good for you. They're telling her the wrong thing. I, would, like, I don't think women should get advice or should get dating advice from women. Especially if you guys are around the same age. If you're a woman, get a dating advice from your parents, your grand, grandma or grandparent, grandparents, your aunties who are married too. Don't get it from your single aunt who has been single for the past 20 years, who has been getting like clap, chicks clap left and right. Don't do that. Get a dating advice from your parents, your grandparents. In my opinion, I might be wrong, but that's what I think it is. That's the best option. That's the best one. 
Because them single women, man, they're going to tell some bullshit. They're going to push you to do some crazy. I mean, if you watch the show, it seems like she was pressured by her female friends to get to get divorced, to file for divorce. And those friends are single still. That's the craziest part. They're single. So stay away from them. All right, let me go ahead and play the last clip that I have here. One, two, three. Yeah! You know I've never dated. <laughs> Corey was my first. Right. Yes. Everything. A few years into the marriage, you realized I made a mistake. Tia, you, you shouldn't have to act in your life. I would go home and feel alone. It's okay to feel sad. It's normal to feel sad. Tia feels alone. She wants somebody to clap them cheeks. Uh, uh. To touch them. She needs some TLC. She said it. She's going through it. Whatever is happening, whatever you have, you have been saying from her, whatever she's been posting, it's not doing it. She needs her man back. Bubu, call your man. Put your pride on the side. Pick up the phone. Be like, Corey, I'm sorry, boo. I know. Maybe he wasn't the perfect guy. I get it. I don't think you were perfect either. Nobody's perfect. Don't tell me he was the devil, the only one. I'm pretty sure you done some wrongs too. So, Bubu, you are missing each other. Get him back. Be the first to pick up the, the call. I mean, the phone. The biggest of... <laughs> 